Okay, so today we have a heat problem, and we are going to look at this uh, no differently than any of the other heat problems. We're going to, before we begin, we're going to write down the formula that we're going to use, of course, and there it is there. Q is equal to mc delta T. We're going to identify our variables, and we will get these from our problem, our question, and let's start. 0 0.500 kilograms. So kilograms is a measure of mass, and mass can be measured in grams or kilograms. Okay, yeah, there's a little snaggle, a little snag here. Look, our constant is given at 0 0.880. Well, that's the measure, um, the standardized specific heat capacity for aluminum. But look at the unit that it's expressed in. We can express this in kilograms or we can express it express it in uh, grams. If our unit is given in kilograms, then I suggest that we convert this unit here so that it is like the constant. We could convert the con we could I mean we can express aluminum uh, and represent it, you know, as a um, joules over kilograms degrees Celsius, but what I tend to uh, get my students to do is leave the constant alone and change the other values. Like for instance, if this was in Fahrenheit, well then of course we have to convert it to Celsius because our constant is in Celsius. Okay, so let's go here. So we know that um, there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram, so therefore 0 0.500 kilograms, that would equate to 500 grams, okay? Specific heat capacity, um, 0 decimal 880 joules grams degrees Celsius, uh, 1.5 times 10 to the third joules, and that's expressed in scientific notation, where you have a number expressed times 10 to the power of an exponent, and I'm going to put this guy back into regular notation, or ordinary notation, and it would look like this. Take this decimal and move it three times to the right, so it looks like that. And um, yeah, this is where sometimes students, um, particularly students that are looking at these heat problems for the first time, will have a difficult time and they'll say, well, wait now, if there's four variables, one, two, three, four, then you need to have three of them in order to solve for the fourth one. That, that's, a, that's a must. You have to have that. If you're looking for, if you, have a, if you have an equation that looks like this, A is equal to B times C, you need two of these before you can solve for the third. So if we're looking for C, then you've got to have a value in there, and you've got to have a value in there in order for you to be able to solve for that. Okay? Um, where this gets a little tricky is students will look and see 51 degrees Celsius, and they'll want to put that there. But remember, this is delta T. And delta T is oops, temperature final minus temperature initial. So what I would do the first time I, I give them a problem where we're looking for the either the initial temperature or I could ask them for the final temperature, um, then of course I would have had to have given them the initial, is I would say this. I'd put this on the board after they see this and they're scratching their heads for a few minutes. Some will get it, some will get it, but this will be a little hint. Find delta T First, and that will give that will give it to some of them, and then we'll start. And they'll get this. So then, what that means is we're going to go over here, and and again, let's go back. When you go back and look at that, a is equal to b times c. If we find delta t, then we're going to have this number here. We'll know what this one is. We're going to get that guy. We know the final temperature is 51. Question's asking for the initial temperature, right? And we're going to get this one here. 
right now because we can get this one because we know C, we know M, and we know Q. So we're going to do this one here first, and then we'll get this guy here second. I'll show you what I mean if I haven't already confused you here. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to rewrite this like so. Okay. And we're going to go 1,500 joules. And we're going to have 500 grams. And our constant is in here. And delta T. We're going to get delta T. Because we have to remember that delta T is comprised of two other variables. It's made up of a final temperature and an initial temperature. So we get this one. We're going to take this value and plug it in here. And then we'll have two out of the three. We'll have this value and this value. And then we can get this one, which is, the, which is what the question is asking for, the initial temperature. So let's have a peek here. So we have 1,500 joules and 500 times decimal 880 is going to give us 440. Uh, these grams cancel. Joules over degrees Celsius X. We are going to divide through by 440 joules degrees Celsius. And we do, what we do to one side of the equation, we do to the other side. This cancels. So we're left with X. And look, thankfully, we are left with a unit expressed in degrees Celsius. Right, that's there. And uh, 1,500 uh, divided by 440 gives us 3 decimal 409. Okay, so let's bring this up here. It's getting kind of messy down here. Let's bring this up here. I lose my color there. What's going on here? No. Okay. So let's bring that up. So it's three decimal four zero nine. We have to make that. We have to fix this so that we have. We can represent this showing the proper number of significant digits. So let's have a look. We have three significant digits here. Uh, this is zero decimal eight eight zero. So there'll be three there. There's two significant digits here, and there's two significant digits here. So we're gonna have three. Desmore 409 using our rules for significant digits with two significant digits. We would represent it like that. Okay. And 3.4, that is our delta T. And we're going to take this formula. Now here's just an extra little step. Delta T is equal to temperature final minus temperature initial. So this 3.4, that's our delta T. We found 3.4 based on our three other variables here. So we're going to plug that in here. So we know that whatever happened here, there was a change in temperature of 3.4 degrees Celsius. We know that the final temperature was 51 degrees Celsius. Questions asking us for the initial temperature. How are we going to solve this? We're going to collect like terms, so we're going to bring this 51 over here, so it looks like this 3.4 degrees Celsius, subtract 51 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to do this out the long way just so you can see what I'm doing. Just so you can see, I'm subtracting 51 right there. It is there. I'm subtracting it from both sides. Subtract x. So 51 subtract 51. That's going to give us zero over here. So there's no need zero and minus x. Don't forget the minus. Very important. Subtract x. And 3.4 subtract 51 degrees Celsius is going to give us. It's going to be a negative negative 47.6 degrees Celsius. 
we're solving for x, so we're going to divide through by minus 1. There's no numerical value in there, but when there's nothing there, it's assumed there's a 1. So we divide through here by minus 1, and all this is going to do really is just change the sign here. So 47.6 degrees Celsius. That is our initial temperature. We're going to go and convert, or not convert, I'm sorry, we're going to um, represent this using the proper number of significant digits, significant digits, and there's two, so we would end up bumping that seven to an eight. So we would have our final answer, 48 degrees Celsius. Now, I'm going to show you one more little trick here. And I'm not going to think I have enough room to do this, but you could also set this up like this and eliminate some of these steps. I'm just going to rewrite this for you and see delta t, um, write in what we know. Okay, I'm just going to take this information from here and I'm going to bring it over. Okay, so the Q is 1,500 joules. I don't know if I'm going to have enough room. I hope I do. I'm going to be squeezing this in here. The mass is 0 decimal 5. Bear with me here, please grams. The C is 0 decimal 8. eight. Yeah, this is going to get a little, might get a little confusing. Joules over degrees Celsius. And this is going to be right down here. I'm just going to write this down here because I'm running out of space here. Um, remember that delta T is temperature final minus temperature initial. So we could actually plug in this right here in the values that we know. And the temperature final is 51 degrees Celsius. 51 degrees Celsius minus X. We could have our, our equation look like that. And if you were to solve this equation, it would be no different than this one. You should end up with, regardless of which way you do it, whether you solve delta T first, which I would recommend the first time, uh, then I would probably do a couple and probably try to get away from that and, and just plug it in just as you see it here. But again, it's, it's, it's a comfort level. It's whatever you're comfortable with. And, um, you know, whether you're solving for this X here or you do it in two steps, where you go for delta T first, like we did, and then substitute it in here and solve for your unknown. Um, either way, you're still going to end up with 48 degrees Celsius. Okay? Um, any questions on this video? I could take this and maybe do this out. I don't have any problem doing that. I'm just a little squeezed for room here now. If somebody would like to see that drawn out, perform the um, perform this way algebraically, I have no problem uh, doing that as well. Okay, so uh, I hope this helped. wasn't too confusing. There's a lot here. Um, slow it down. Hit pause. Go back through. Ask questions. I uh, you know if I can help you uh, with some questions or whatever, feel free to to make comments. Okay, thank you, and have a great day.